Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Desert Streaming Podcast. This is Marco Casanova, your host, and I'm here with Ron Sitlau. Ron Sitlau is a good friend of Desert Stream Ministries, and he pastors a church by the name of Calvary Church on the southwest side of Chicago, an alumnus of Western Seminary and was ordained in the Reformed Church in America. And he's written uh, multiple books, co-wrote Compassion Without Compromise, How to Love Your Gay Friends and without losing the truth, excuse me. And he also wrote Hope for the Same Sex Attracted. He has a podcast of his own, Ordinary Christians. He's been on the board of the Restored Hope Network, a great organization beloved by Desert Stream. And Ron, it's such an honor and a privilege for for me to have you on the, on a podcast. So thank you so Same, much. Same, Marco. It's so great talking to you. Thank you, Ron. And Ron, um, I just want to really open up with uh, just gratitude to you and your ministry. I think uh, when I when I hear these names, like you're one of these names in the office, like Ron Sitlau, kind of like one of these pioneers in the whole enterprise of the sexually and relationally broken finding Jesus. So I just want to mm-hmm. thank you, brother, for just your own story, your own witness to Jesus and how you're bringing many people to him for the saving of their lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I, I receive it. <laughs> So, Ron, tell us a little bit about yourself. Just how how did you come to Jesus? Uh, I, I want to know your story in terms of what what brought you to the point of saying, Jesus, I need you. Yeah, I grew up in Southern California and uh, my parents were Christians, nominally Christian. I was a Christian. Uh, my family was a Christian. Uh, we're Christians and I grew up uh, middle class family in the suburbs mm-hmm. of Orange County and uh, at some point in my 14, 15 year old self, I was sexually abused. Hmm. I don't know if that was necessarily the sole, you know, reasoning for my same sex desire, but Mm -hmm. it definitely uh, sexualized Hmm. kind of masculine relationships for me. Yeah. And it was in the midst of already being very addictive. And so I've always been, very addictive. And, uh, you know, the, you know, sex is, is something that is in that way, very appealing, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. the rush, the hunt, the, you know, the, the, the whole cycle of it. And so after in the midst of that, I began to, I became really divided. Mm -hmm. I was a very, you know, smart kid, but awkward, had no real social skills with peers, but in this world, uh, you know, in which I was alone in, uh, either, you know, through these kind of connections sexually with another uh, person or, you know, in pornography or in my own mind, I was much more in control. And so, uh, and so this double duplicit person, the split person really began to develop. There was a person who, uh, you know, operated during the day and, Mm. you know, went to Christian high school and went to church on Sunday And then there was this person who lurked in the shadows, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to get fed. So this was even like in your high school years, you felt like, oh, I I, I see this divide in me. I feel this divide in me. Oh, it was so clear. I don't know. You know, I was I think I was so, uh, you know, running Mm -hmm. so fast that I don't know if I I never would have identified it for fear of finding out. But the divide was so clear that. Uh, when the Lord began to pursue me, you know, uh, several years later, uh, that was the primary work, the wow. clashing of those two worlds, you know. Yeah. And so in high school, uh, again, you know, awkward kid trying to find my way, uh, who I really connected with were druggies. Hmm. Uh, I love druggies. I love drugs. <laughs> and uh, I became a crystal meth addict. Hmm. And uh there's addiction in my family and, you know, alcohol, marijuana, crystal meth, acid, those things. Wow. I just, I just, I loved it. And I loved it because I didn't have to exist in the real world. The real world was just so painful, uh, so monotonous, had no meaning to me. And, uh, but in these places where I felt something, you know, you get high, you feel something, you have sex, you feel something and feeling something meant a lot to me. It it was the, it was the only thing that mattered. And hmm. so uh, that, you know, anything I do in life, I do it really fast and hard and hmm. I, I don't do anything halfway. It's always been my <laughs> way. And if you do that with drugs and sex, 
at the end, I mean, it lasted about four or five years in that world. Wow. wow. And uh, I, I literally, I, I began to have drug induced schizophrenia from the mm-hmm. crystal meth. And uh, that's, uh, I had a friend who was a pastor who had befriended me, you know, a couple of years before, but mm-hmm. that was the summer of 1997. I had this experience in my parents' garage where the Lord visited me. I mean, I didn't see him or anything, but wow. it was so clear to me. And it was, you choose today between life and death. And it was the clearest moment I've ever had in my life in which I knew if I said no this time, it was done. Like wow. death or prison, you know, like yeah, the cost right. was going to be so extreme. And uh, it was the first time my conscience had been awoken in years. Mm. And the Lord met me. And uh, that began uh, a different journey. How old were you at this point, Ron? Oh, I was uh, 22, I think, when I got sober. Wow. wow. Yeah. The way you describe just the, the escape from reality and wanting to pursue sex and drugs because you felt something. I mean, that, that's so accessible for so many people today. It's like, wow, yeah. and an escape into fantasy, an escape into unreality and wanting to feel in that escape. It's like, that's so addicting for so many, you know? And the the coming to like coming to grips with oneself and like waking up to reality, it must have been a rude awakening, but something, something inviting of this Jesus saying like choose today, right. choose today. There is something uh, again, you know. I go really fast wherever I go, and I'm not the brightest. You, the Lord always has to. I will not turn until I'm forced to turn. Hmm. And so the nice thing about pain. Uh, in its most redemptive way is it slows you down, it stops you, and it causes you to turn. And so Mm. that was the grace of God in that summer where I had nowhere else to go. There was no, um, it wasn't like a lot of people were like, you know, we really want to be with you because you you are just so, you know, you're just so wonderful. It was like, no, you are, you know, there's like demons crawling over you and Mm. even unsafe people. It's like, you're just odd, you know, you're Mm. weird. And I was so isolated by the enemy and couldn't tell, you know, reality. I couldn't tell what it was anymore. And the only thing that I could cling to was uh, Jesus. And Mm -hmm. it was that anchor rescued me because it was unshakable. Even in the depths of my darkness, there were moments when I would cry out. I remember one time I was having, I mean, I was going nuts and I just began to worship and the Lord visited me. I was high nuts. And it was that anchor, unmovable, unshakable, Whoa. that uh, it rescued me. It brought me back into reality, into a place in which I could be, yeah, in the moment with myself, yeah, and it not be a horrible thing. Ron, you bring up a good point of just kind of worshiping in those moments. Uh, I remember when I was in the seminary, and you know, I, I was a little allergic to the whole praise and worship thing for for a time because it's like you know, I'm a Catholic. And, but then it was like, wait a minute, this is, this is like a key to my freedom where I couldn't sleep because I was so addicted to porn and masturbation. And there was a, there was a a season in my life when I really wanted to kick that. So I would just put my hands up and worship Jesus, like sing a song, a simple song to him. And it would help me. It would usher in something into my room that was, had altars built to pagan idols. And it was like, I want them crushed, but I need your help to crush them. You know? (laughs) And it's amazing. As I hear you, it's like when you call on Jesus through these simple songs of worship, he shows up, he comes, you know, he comes to meet us. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Yeah. I think uh, the most profound moments of my life has been around worship and encounter Hmm. where something turns in my soul, something stands up and I get a little glimpse of who he is Hmm. and in reflection, a little bit of a glimpse of who I really am. And it changes the course of my life. I've had it. I mean, it doesn't happen every day. Um, Often I worship and nothing happens. Hmm. It just feels like any other thing. Then there's these moments where he decides to intervene and he, he sets the heart right. He sets me right. And there, they prove to me at least that he is the God who can save us from anything Hmm. that nothing is outside of his bounds. Wow. And uh, yeah. No, that's so true. Yeah. I I, I'm reminded as you say that I have this image of like the Lord putting a mirror up to your face 
as you worship him. There's this priest I know, his name's Father Angelus. Um, he's a Franciscan friar of the renewal. And he, he was given a talk in Ohio, was there with him. And he said, you know, once we we proclaim who Jesus is, he he reveals who we are. It, it's just very simple. It's like, you know that, but when you hear it, it's like, whoa, when I worship Jesus and proclaim him as Lord of my life, it unlocks identification over me. Like he actually like puts a, a mirror to my face and it's like, oh, okay, I'm not... I'm not a piece of crap. <laughs> like I, yeah, you know, I, I and to can, the degree, right. I have great value and, yes. uh, and I can only know that in a reflection of yeah. who God is Amen. And in any other way. It's, it just doesn't work. So Ron, when you had this experience in the garage, like this experience of the Lord kind of flooding your life, how did you get up? Like, what, what did it look like for you to get up from there? So yeah, that next Sunday, uh, I called my pastor friend who had actually resigned from his position at his church and was going to a vineyard church. Hmm. And I just said, I'm done. I don't know what that means. You know, he'd heard this a million times. I'd been done a million times. And, uh, <laughs> but I knew in my heart that something had fundamentally switched in me where the, uh, the Lord had, the Lord had intervened. The Lord was being gracious. There was a kindness. So I, I started going to church right away. I uh, stopped drugs right away. I stopped acting wow. out physically with other people right away. And, you know, pornography lured around a while. Sure. Uh, but that first summer, I was immersed into community. I was, uh, I began to build friendships with real people mm -hmm. in real spaces that weren't about using and being used. And I, I left everything. You know, there wasn't a lot there, it was wreckage, but the relationships, the friendships, the those worlds. And that's the first time I ever met Andy and Desert Stream was that summer wow. in uh, 1997. <laughs> so was it kind of uh did you just hear him like speak or was it this group, like this living waters thing that you got plugged into? Yeah, I you know I uh again I'm not I don't you know I don't do research. I mean I don't I I'm a horrible Christian, Marco. You don't want to do anything I do, <laughs> but um, it was the grace of God. My my friend who had had been a friend since high school was a worship uh -huh. leader at Anaheim Vineyard. Okay, he he was leading uh, worship for the first Cross Current. Okay, it was like the pilot group, wow. and he invited me, and you know my pastor friend I think encouraged me to go. And uh, this is the best story ever. So it's like the first night I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm barely, I've been sober like a month or something. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm like, the Lord is moving, you know? Yeah, so Andy yeah. is like my small group leader with, I think David Alvarez or somebody. Okay. And uh, so I'm there, I do my thing. And, you know, Andy, who is delightful in every way, mm -hmm. you know, he goes, you, you, you might be demonized. <laughs> and I'm wow. like, well, yeah, that's great. And uh, That's great. that I'll is really encouraging. On the first yeah, I'll, night. I'm gonna go home and have hot fudge Sunday. <laughs> and so, but he was right. And uh, wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was just Rod. I'm so surprised you came back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but oh, it was actually, uh, it was good news. Yeah, it was good news. Wow. Uh, it was good news that. Um, this I believe this with all my heart that Jesus, when he intervenes, he can bring to bear all the resources of his kingdom. Amen. And that's what I experienced. For, wow. That's what I still experience. And uh, all we do, our yes is important, yeah. but it's being caught up into the flow of his own river. It's like, we're not making it happen. Yeah. He's, a, he's doing something. And I can say yes to it or no, but boy, if you say yes, it's... Wow. Uh, he does good things. Yeah. It's like it, it unleashes a providence that he's just waiting to unleash in our lives. Like once we say yep. yes, he just floods in. I just, I just see that as you speak like this, this community forms around you. You have a place to worship. Now you have this friend who's leading the worship in the Anaheim vineyard. You have this Andy Comiskey, <laughs> like yeah. it's just amazing. The doors that opened up when you just simply said, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. So at this point, like you said, you're a month sober and but you were like convicted. You're like, no, Jesus, I'm, I'm clinging to Jesus here. <laughs> I need yep. Jesus. Yeah. My earliest conviction and my earliest conviction and has been 
the foundational piece of my whole walk with Jesus is that Jesus is the one that mm. uh, that I can I can rest in Him, I can trust Him, I can uh, I can really learn from Him how to live my life. Yeah, and that He will protect me, He will defend me, He will fight for me. And I just Amen. knew it. I remember going to AA and telling people, it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm sober, if I don't know Jesus. And, you know, they were like, they were having heart attacks in the seats. Mm, yeah. Like, what are you talking about, you punk kid? But I was actually right. And uh, they were wrong in that, uh, you know, if Jesus isn't the one, you should drink and rub against each other and go yeah, for it because right. what else is there? There is nothing. Right. Wow. But if he's the one, then I want to know. I want to know him. I want to everything he has. I want, and yeah. uh, man, that's been my my journey is getting to know him. So, Ron, it sounds like I mean, when you when you got plugged into this vineyard reality, and I mean, you just you you just hit the ground running. So, was it kind of like, wow, I want to I want to learn more about scripture? I mean, just hearing you ordained in the Reformed Church in America, I imagine like you probably clung to the scriptures, like you were probably just I don't know, just diving into the Bible. Yeah, I'm a you know, I'm, I, I can tell by you, I'm, I'm a thinker. I've always been a thinker. And so early on, I just consume things and I'm yeah. thinking through things. And, you know, I've been playing around with this one idea for 25 years is how are you transformed? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? How do you do it? And so it's, it, I mean, it's not like an abstract thing. I'm, I'm the experiment I'm trying to, <laughs> and then I want to be able to articulate it to anybody who asks. Right. Yeah. And so I hit the ground running. It was the grace of God. And, you know, it was all in the midst of, you know, I'm sure I was clinically depressed. Hmm. I'm sure I should have been institutionalized. I'm sure that, uh, that, you know, I had to work through so many things with people. I had, you know, destroyed trust, all those things. Hmm. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a revival over here. It was sure. a bloody mess. Hmm. But in the midst of it is this, this resurrected Lord and anytime I'd get confused or overwhelmed by the mess, I would have this moment either in worship mm -hmm. in my room or at church wow. or in my own devotion in which I would see his face. And it was like, you're worth it. I'll do wow. it. I'm in. And it wasn't like I'm taking a risk. He was worth it. It yeah. was true. Yeah. And my whole, every time I did that, my heart would just stand a little bit more. And I, and I just had this view of him that took me through that whole valley of just crap, which was just horrific. Yeah. That took three or four years to go through. And in the midst of it, I became a different person wow. and became a gift. I could be a gift to yeah. people, not, you know, not like, oh, wow, you know, keep your hands to yourself, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, um, praise the Lord for that. Yeah. No, and I and think that is just to, just to, you know, sidebar the whole, you know, what you're doing, what I believe with all my heart and advocate for is we cannot, no matter who listens or who doesn't, we must always proclaim the utter uh, complete uh, promise of mm. the gospel to every part of the human soul and body. And to give up any ground is to give up on the gospel itself. And so mm. what we're fighting for even if it's not remembered for a few generations, we will keep it alive in the testimony of our lives and those Amen. we touch that no, it's true. He's yeah. the one right. and there's nothing that's off limits to him. Yeah. And so what you're doing and desert stream is doing the reason I love you guys. And I love Andy with all my heart. He's mm -hmm. a father in the faith Amen. is because you guys are doing prophetic apostolic ministry and you know, they kill all the prophets, bro. Yeah. It's not like you guys, right. it's not like good, you know, you can barely, they'll even barely let you on the computer anymore, mm, right. but still you you're there. And believe me, the Lord is doing it for a purpose. Amen. No, thanks for saying that, Ron. I, I think even as you mentioned, like Andy and the father in the faith, it's true. Like even for myself, like there, there was something about this message of the gospel that I, I, I don't think I'd had, I had heard proclaimed before coming to living waters, you know, and it saved my life. I feel like you know, that yeah, whoa, Jesus can, he can save me there. You know, he can, he actually wants to like redeem me there in my broken sexuality in a place where I felt the most shame and addicted and all the above. It's like, he wants to save me there. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I, what, 
what I love about what you said, um, you, you leave room for the process. I love how you said like, it wasn't a revival. Like it was a bloody mess. <laughs> Cause it's like, I think sometimes people think pray it away or, you know, once you convert it, it's, it sort of all falls into place. And it's like, wait, it's a process, you know, it's like right. we're saved and being saved. Jesus comes right. to redeem us. And yet we have to walk it out in the context right. of, of a good community. And right. I, I, can you speak more to that of how that looked for you? Because I think that is so important. That's something I've learned so much from Andrew and just, and, and living waters. It's not a once and done thing. It's like, we're constant, we're still pilgrims. We're pilgrims on this journey. Yep of being yep. restored, of rediscovering our lost fullness. We're still pilgrims. And you know what? That's okay to hold that intention. I'm saved and being saved, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I've been doing this for 25 years. Wow. And let's go. <laughs> yeah. And so when I think about that, uh, I've had high, I've had moments of God's intervention, profound, prophetic power moments, mm -hmm. but four maybe five. Everything else is valley, little bit of manna, a little bit of water, hmm. feeling lost, feeling confused, Yeah, you know, turning on the TV and forgetting for six months, Yeah, getting back up, <laughs> confessing sin, uh, you know, fighting for my mind and yeah. the clarity of mind. And so the whole trope of you know, pray it away, or I don't even know who says that. I don't even know anyone who, you know, I, I don't, I've been around, I've been around this. I mean, I didn't hang out with Exodus people, so maybe they all said that, but like around Andy living waters, I've been around it 25 years. I've never heard one person right. who, in whom it wasn't very clear. Any strength I have is within my weakness. Yeah. And there are, there is weakness. That means that I will always have tender places yeah. that could become uh, temptation mm -hmm. and could become sin and yeah. even death. And I just don't know. I mean, I'm very free. I'm as, as free as I've ever been in mm -hmm. relation to my sexuality and my identity. Yeah. But that doesn't, I don't know what it means tomorrow or this afternoon. Yeah. I'm not, it doesn't mean that I'm not like, the winds blow and I'm tempted or I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm made afraid of my own desire. Uh, and that doesn't, and if that happens, that doesn't mean anything. Except exactly. It's the next step on the journey. Amen. And, yeah. But I will say what is true mm -hmm. is that I am really free mm -hmm. and I am really in love with my wife. And I know what faithfulness and fidelity is. Wow. I know what it means to stand in the storm and I'll be damned if anyone says that uh, that that isn't what Jesus does for those who want it. Amen. And um, I, I, I'm not even. It's I can't even can't even. That's no, the reason well I got said. so upset with um, whoever that Vineyard guy was, Ken Wilson, recently mm. about his statement on you know pray the gay away. Mm. It's like you know somebody needs to take you out to the woodshed, buddy. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's true. It's really. It's um, what I find, what just what you're saying. We're 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 in, at Desert Stream. We're going through something called um, like we're we're going through like this little series um, as a as a as a team on holy fear of the Lord, and it's exactly that, Ron. Like I can I can be lost to this. Like I I know I know the way the winds blow. I know I know the seasons of my temptations. That doesn't mean that Jesus didn't save me. It doesn't mean that Jesus isn't saving me. I just know the frailty of my humanity. Like you said, the tender places, like I know that. And to say that, I think nuances it, nuances healing so much. It makes it more accessible to me. Honestly, that's more attractive to me mm -hmm. than, oh, like I, I I don't have any temptations. I don't struggle. It's like, what? <laughs> like, where do you live? Like, what are you taking? Give right. me some of that. It's like, no, right. this G it's like, it makes it more real. Like, no, these are moral issues. It, it it intricately involves my will. I have to walk it out. I have to have to learn how to walk it out. I have to be known in the midst of it. I have to confess my sin when I fall. I have to be faithful to, like you said, your wife. I love that you're you're chased unto her and your family. Like all of that. That that is that is that's the real 
that's the real Christian walking it out, you know? Yeah. And so all of these kind of, um, I don't know, these, these weird um, tales out there of like, pray it away and all that. It's just so silly. It's so silly. Cause like right. when you're actually walking it out, it's like, we don't think that in the least, you know? Right. You know? And what's so interesting. I was thinking about this recently is I know tons of people from my living water days who are doing very well, hmm. who are living quiet lives of holiness. You know, they're not marching or making videos or, mm -hmm. and I just thought, you know, that's the Gideon's army. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and, and then their places of influence, no one's telling them it's not true. Right. No one's shaking their foundations, hopefully. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they are either in their singleness or in their marriage. They are proclaiming Christ crucified and resurrected. And uh, I tell you what, that testimony is much more powerful than people up on stages. Amen. Amen. I like that. The quiet witness of the holy ones just yeah. living the day to day, faithful to Jesus. That's beautiful. What I, I, I really love about your story, Ron, is um, you're a pastor and you have a you have you have a background in sort of brokenness, deep brokenness and deep redemption. And um, as a Catholic, I, I find that really fascinating <laughs> because I, I don't think a lot of priests are free to to really share how Jesus has saved them or even if he has in those levels yet, you know? Um, so it's, it's, right. a, it's I don't really know if beautiful. evangelicals are very free either. So I don't know if that's a, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, was yeah. At, I, I was having dinner last night with an elder and he was, uh -huh. he was talking to a, a new staff member. He goes, you know um, you know, he was saying nice things about him. He goes, and he's really transparent, like sometimes so transparent that makes me so uncomfortable. Like, please, <laughs> could you stop? And so, so it's been, all of that is uh, when you decide to do it, when you're the senior leader, mm -hmm. you're digging your own well and you're doing mm -hmm. it for others. Yeah. And I did not, it's not my personality. I don't like it. I don't like mm -hmm. talking to, I mean, if I were left to myself, I would be, I would live in Alaska by myself, cutting wood, <laughs> staring at a tree and I would be fine for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I love my wife. I love my kids. I love my church because yeah. of this, I know that my life is a gift. I would be dead. Yeah. And so right. I'm propelled again and again. And, uh, uh no, one story, uh, yeah. last week, the reason that I'm a pastor, I think in this, this, this idea of deep redemption, long journey, this couple comes in and they are a mess in every way, abuse, emotional abuse, drug use, chaos. They're not married. And they're not Christian. They're nothing. They, they came here on a whim and a prayer and a suggestion. Mm -hmm. What was so interesting, she grew up in the same area I did in Southern California. And uh, I knew, I mean, if she, they went to any counselor, my wife's a therapist, there, there's, there is no hope for them uh -huh. because of the level they would say, you know what, uh, you know, break it up, figure out the kids, go mm -hmm. on. That'd be the best thing for you. And I just knew in that moment. I was like, you guys, you guys can do this mm -hmm. and you know, you need to get saved quick. But, um, and I had total faith and they're like, she's weeping. Wow. Not a Christian, nothing. She was talking about meditation and something weird. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was like, no, Jesus, it's wow. Jesus. And it's mm -hmm. not just, I'm saying like, I read it out of a book. I can go right to the depths of their brokenness and I can yeah. sit with them and have a meal Yeah, uh, because somebody did it with me. And I am so comfortable in those spaces because I'm comfortable in those spaces in me for the most part. Yeah. And uh, that's why I'm a pastor. And that's why the Lord has brought me to the point I am for the least and the lost and the broken. Ron, I think that's a great way to end. Grateful for your life. Grateful for your witness. Grateful for your ministry. Thanks for all that you do. Um, this has been great. I think our, our listeners will, will find this. There's, there's just so many things I wrote down. Just. Uh, little nuggets <laughs> dude you do like these little kingdom nuggets bro you're, praise the lord you're throwing hey, man, like i'm a popcorn. preacher man you're Absolutely. like throwing like these like golden popcorn chicken balls at me man this is awesome and i love it so, anything good it's the lord <laughs> ron thanks so much for being with us today and uh bless you you're a delight you're a delight hey. you're a delight and i'm thankful for you and thanks ron praise the lord be encouraged yeah. i look forward to meeting you in person brother for sure all right let's make it happen Okay. Bless you, brother. All right, Desert Streamers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Until next time, God bless you guys. Peace. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Desert Streaming Podcast. For more information about us or to get in touch with us, please do visit our website, desertstream.org. 
We're so grateful for you. Thank you for listening in. Please do share this episode with your friends. And until next time, God bless you.